Hi there, another video from me. It's been a long time since I made my last video. Well, I think the last one was this medium wave modulator thingy. So here's something I want to show you. It's a short wave transmitter. And now I'm building up everything that has been delivered to me, well, with some exceptions. There is a story behind this thing. More than a year ago, a year ago I did get a gift and inside this gift, among other circuits, was this shortwave transmitter. It was different back then. It didn't have the solder on the antenna connector and the LED was missing, I had to add it. And a person who I know very long now and we are somewhat in contact, sent me this and he said he's not pleased with how this thing works. And as he knows, I'm into RF and transmitters. He said, Stefan, may you look at the transmitter and give it a review. Okay, now my tweezers fell down. I use tweezers to place the paper thingies you will see that later. Anyhow, um, this is the review of the transmitter and you can see it, but there is a lot of work that went into the circuit. I tried to modify it. I did a lot of measurements with it. I changed the circuit. I did a lot of things and these are on my camera, on my other camera. And I would have made a video out of this and I started to edit the video, but it, it didn't work. I have a 15 years old laptop using it for video editing and it did work to some degree. But then when I was adding more videos, the laptop turned off. I mean, it didn't turn off, it shut down the movie maker, it crashed, it didn't work. Occasionally I got it to add the clip and work with it, but it's so instable and dodgy, <sighs> not really usable. Due to some limitations, I haven't really installed a good video editing program on my main computer. And without the editing program on the main computer, all I was doing is invest another 10 plus plus hours and make this video finally do some measurements and do a lot of things to show this transmitter. Looking at the circuit, you can see it's a professional made circuit board. It comes like this, it, as far as I could find, it comes pre-assembled and also it has a telescopic antenna with it, which, which is a bit confusing. I'll get to that in a moment. Um, but for now, let's just have a look at the manual. Unlike many Chinese manuals, this one comes in two languages, Chinese and English. And if you open it, you will find Chinese explanation, a parts list. Uh, and on the other side, you will find an English explanation. It mainly explains how this transmitter does work, how it does operate, what is the component number and the component. You will see what does this component do. Okay, on the other side would be the schematic and the PCB layout, but I won't show this hence due to, I wouldn't say copyright, let's rather say respect. Okay, one thing that caught my attention is that here is a block schematic how this thing works and it says one quarter wavelength antenna output. And as you know, a quarter wavelength antenna, well, if you are into RF, it, you know, uh, you know this kind of stuff, it has 50 ohms impedance, 50 ohms. And if you use a telescopic antenna at that low frequency, it has a lot more of ohms impedance. And you don't want to have a mismatch between your transmitter and your antenna because you will not only lose a lot of RF power that way, also it can potentially damage the final amplifier transistor. In the next step, I'm doing a live action <laughs> action with and building up the transmitter because this is going to be a very dry video, lots and lots of theory. And I didn't want it to be a dry video only, so we'll see me setting up the transmitter and demonstrate, yes, it does work. Um, I did uh, change the circuit, but I changed it back to original because the review is not about how could you modify this transmitter. The review is more about how is this transmitter out of the box, how does it perform, how does it work. And although this experiment doesn't really show a lot regarding to this question, uh, it does show that the transmitter is indeed working. It does broadcast audio to a nearby radio or shortwave receiver better. Uh, I'm using my trusty uh, uh, communications receiver, which is set on 21 megahertz with the uh, squash activated, so we don't hear the loud hiss when there is no signal. And I'll plug it in, and you can see we have a signal now. Press play. As you could very clearly hear, the uh, transmitter does indeed broadcast the signal. I'm doing this a bit in a hurry because the German part took me two parts to film this and this will also be two parts, but I want to get as much information as I can into the video. As you can see, 
Now the Walkman fell down. <laughs> As you can see, the transmitter is indeed performing to some degree. It does broadcast audio from an audio source, which can be connected via this headphone jack to a nearby radio. I found that they give a very low range compared to the output power. I found two different infos about output. One says 300 milliwatts. This is the one on the package. And the trader says 100 milliwatts. But in fact, I measured it to methods with a light bulb and with a power meter, and it has pretty much 100 milliwatts. So yes, they are not making things up. If I have a look at the circuit board, I notice that there is one component that you can align, and this is this yellow potentiometer. And this yellow potentiometer aligns the output power. The RF output power is aligned via this potentiometer, and it goes anywhere from really not much power to up full 100 milliwatts. With 100 milliwatts and a good antenna, you can transmit miles far. But like I said, they give on a range of about, uh, I think it was less than 50 meters, which is ridiculous compared to how much the output power of this transmitter is. Okay, tests and measurements. Since in the manual they state they use a quarter wavelength antenna, and since how the values of the slow pass filter are, I assumed this is pretty much a 50 ohms output signal. So I did measurements. I have my test set up here. This is how I measured it. And on one side I have my transmitter. Then I have three feet of RG174 a coax cable. And on the other side I have uh, 50 ohms to get 50 ohms impedance to not have a mismatch here. A voltage divider and my communications receiver with which I checked the RF harmonics. The reason I'm, why I'm doing this is because this coil here can to some degree act as an antenna, like a transmission antenna. And if I have my receiver close to this coil, it may interfere with the receiver, giving it worse results regarding the harmonics test than it would give if I place the receiver one meter away and ensure that the coil is not transmitting into my receiver. Okay, now let's have a look at the results. Let me just look where the drawings are. Here are the drawings. And what I also did is I made tests at different RF levels. Here you can see the results. The, uh, the RF level has been adjusted from the lowest power possible, um, the very lowest power to mid 50% power and the maximum power. And here you can see the results. I have to say something before I show this. There is a standard, if you want to call it like that. If you build your own transmitter in amateur radio, you are supposed to ensure that your transmitter does uh, have a certain, a certain level of RF uh, harmonic attenuation. And usually, the, the very lowest thing you can go is about 40 decibel. It means if you have a 90 decibel strong signal, your second uh, frequency, the double frequency, must be uh, attenuated 40 dB. That means in, from 90 dB, it must be low to 50 dB. There are probably uh, rules for how the th second, third, fourth, and so on harmonic are suppressed, but I guess it's just somewhere over here. Like You have to really suppress the second harmonic already. And this is, like I said, the lowest, the minimal, the minimal uh, thing you have to do. Uh, if, you, if it's worse than that, you are not allowed to use the transmitter. I mean, by law. 3 dB means two times more power. 6 dB means four times more power. Uh, more power. 20 dB means 100 times more power. 30 dB means 1000 times more power. So 40 dB would mean if you have uh, a signal here, then the first harmonic must be 10,000 times weaker. Its transmission power must be 10,000 times weaker than the signal you want to browse. You're wanting to broadcast. And now let's have a look at the results. How does our transmitter from China turn out? Well, not that good on my 50 ohms test. As you can see, there is not really any suppression between 21 and 42. 36 is getting a little weaker, 84 and 105. Of course, this looks like an FM transmitter coil, then there is a resonance. The FM frequencies are very good, uh, so, uh, attenuated. But then if you go to the aircraft band, you have another harmonic, which is quite strong. And in the amateur radio band, you have also a harmonic. Then 50% power, we still have about the same image, but now these two are inverted. So seemingly, depending on how you adjust the power, uh, this is going to affect how the transistor amplifies and how the, tra how the circuit overall works. So I changed that, uh, or whether the circuit changed that. So now the harmonic in the uh, flight band is weak and the harmonic in the amateur radio band is strong. Still, this is not how you want to use an antenna on a transmitter because you can really interfere with others. Okay, I did 
other things then. I then said, okay, they are selling the transmitter with a telescopic rod antenna. Let's try one of these. So I made two tests. I tested the uh, transmitter with a rod antenna. And here is my drawing. I hope I get it in the shot. Yes, I got it in the shot. Here is a chair, office chair. I put a battery pack, the transmitter with a 70 centimeters, that's two feet and four inch long telescopic antenna. I put it on top of the chair. The antenna was leaning against the chair lean. And then I had a one meter or three feet long audio cable, which was just laying around on the chair. At a distance of at about three meters or nine feet, I used my receiver with an external antenna and picked up the harmonics because in the pictures I've seen where this transmitter is offered, they are selling it with a telescopic antenna. Also, later on, during the test, I added a ground to the transmitter. That means I added a shielded cable to avoid the skin effect as good as I can and added it to the protection earth from my main wall outlet. This will give the transmitter a good ground because you need a good ground. This is like a scale. And if you have the antenna on one side, one side is up whilst the other side is down and you want them to have equal. Without ground, the antenna is up, lots of RF is not on the antenna, it's actually on the transmitter. And if you add a ground, it will change and the RF goes to the antenna and also some RF goes to ground. Here are the results. This is uh, the result of my antenna test. In the first test, the wall plug was not connected, the wall outlet. And you can see that the frequency we are wanting to broadcast on is very weak. <laughs> it's very weak. The first harmonic is strong, the second harmonic is even stronger, so it's transmitting more on the harmonic where it's not supposed to transmit, rather than on the frequency where it's supposed to transmit. On 84 we also suddenly get a signal and it's going insane on 2 meter amateur radio band. And now the change. Now I added the wall outlet connector and now you can see how heavily it changed. Now the antenna is transmitting mainly and not the wires which are resonant at higher frequencies. You can see that we have a strong signal at 21, still a strong signal at 42, but then it's slowly creeping down. But you can see it's like a U-shaped a U shaped diagram, and it's not supposed to be like that. But this is what I got out of the transmitter. And I really spent hours doing these measurements. Um, okay, this is uh, the video is about to end in a moment, in, a, in two minutes or whatever, two minutes, something. And before it ends, I will have a look into the transmitter circuit. Uh, I did make a drawing of the circuit and the drawing you can see when I added or when I put it here, here's the drawing of the transmitter. And now let's not focus on how this thing overall works, let's focus on the final RF stage. So this is their version of a low pass filter. They have the coil, this is this coil here, and then they have a capacitor to get rid of the DC and only have the RF AC being coupled, one capacitor to ground, which sort of makes sense, and another coupling capacitor for the antenna. This is like a safe money version of a real harmonic filter, because usually if you have a PI filter or a harmonic filter, this is how it's supposed to look. So this is basically what they did. I forgot to draw in a capacitor because there's another difference. What is pulled here does not match with what is in the schematic. Here they saved this capacitor. So they saved even more money, added this coil, this capacitor and this capacitor. This is what is in the circuit. And this is, it's like an idea of a harmonic filter. I get what they want him to do. And this probably also matches with the results but it doesn't work. A harmonic filter has a coupling capacitor on a transmitter, one capacitor to ground, inductor, and either a variable capacitor to ground if it's a PI filter, or a fixed capacitor to ground if it's a 50 ohm slow pass filter. And they wanted to save money and they paid it off with the harmonics being emitted. I guess they just don't care because most of the buyers, I don't want to say things like that, but a lot of the buyers who buy this thing, plug it in, hook up an antenna and be happy that they can hear music from the radio but I'm one of the persons who does an analysis of the circuit. So this was it for the RF. You can see the harmonics are not well suppressed. And in the next part, I'm going to make an even deeper analysis of how the circuit performs. So this is the end of part one, 21 megahertz shortwave transmitter that was gifted to me. And I am supposed to review it, maybe change the circuit and make a video about it. And this is it. Thank you for watching.